For another geometric um, application, we're going to start thinking outside the plane and look at what happens when we try to use integration to find volumes. So when we're finding volumes, and as you can see in your notes on OneNote, you can go and find a link to a lovely little um, GeoGebra page that is a really good 3D visualization of what we're going to talk about. So if you want to check that out after this lesson, I highly recommend it. So instead of summing two-dimensional rectangles, okay, Okay, so when we're having when we're when we're doing an integral, let's think about what that means. So we have a function, and we're trying to find the area. We're doing a definite integral. We're finding the area under the curve by trying to sum up, let's say from a to b. We're trying to sum up all these little tiny rectangles, and these are little tiny two-dimensional little rectangles with a width and a height. And we're trying to make the width as small as possible until it's basically zero. So it's sort of like we're trying to draw lines and then fill up a two-dimensional space with these thin little lines. What we're going to be doing now is kind of taking our lines and popping them out of the page and thinking about summing instead of 2D little, these little tiny rectangles, which are really kind of almost one dimensional little lines that we're trying to sum up to get in two dimensional area. We're going to think of having little tiny slices of area that we're going to try to sum up to get a volume. So instead of summing rectangles that are sort of like lines, we are going to be summing prisms. So tiny little three slices of three-dimensional stuff that are really going to act like an area. Okay? So little sort of prisms that have a known um, that we would be able to calculate the area of each of these slices in terms of x. Okay, so when we do this, our volume is going to equal the integral from a to b of our area in terms of x dx. So let's see what an example problem might look like. So example number one. Okay. Find the volume of a solid bounded by the curves. So not just bounded, whose base, base is bounded by the curves y equals x and y equals x squared. So we have a base bounded by the curves between x equals 0 and x equals 1 with cross sections that are squares. Okay, so Let's see if we can visualize this. We have here and here. We're going to draw our function. So this is our line y equals x. This is our y equals x squared. This is 1. This is 1. y equals x squared. And so the idea, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having a solid that is formed by rectangles that are popping out of the page. And there's one more piece of information we're going to need. We need to know that these squares are perpendicular to the x-axis. So we are going to draw squares. So what we're going to have is we are going to have, if we see here, each of these little lines I'm drawing is going to be the base of a square <clears throat> that's going to kind of pop out of the page. So it's going to come up here, up here. I'm drawing it a little sideways. So this is like a square that's coming straight up out of the page. 
So we want a little square and its base, the base of this square, sorry, it is incredibly hard to draw. I have, I've never quite managed to make a perfect sketch of this situation. So we have the bases of our squares here and the square itself is coming up out of the page. And how high and how big it is, is going to depend. And this is going to make a solid. So think of this as just coming straight up out of the page at us. Like I said, it's a little hard to draw. Um, and we're trying to find the volume. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding up the area of all these squares and we're going to make them kind of thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and make that distance between the squares go to zero so that we have sort of these little square prisms and we're making them thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner until we have our sort of continuous solid. Um, and like I said, check out that visualization because it really helps this make a lot of sense. So essentially, we want to know what the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what the area of each of our square is in terms of x. So what is our area in terms of x? Well, we notice that here on this region, y equals x is always greater than y equals x squared. Okay, so the length of the base, so the area of a square is the length of the side squared, and the length of our side is going to be the distance between these two functions. So it's going to be x, which is the top part of our side, minus x squared. And we're going to take this and we are actually going to square it. Okay, so that's our area in terms of x. So a of x is x squared mi x minus x squared squared. And that will give us the area of any one of these squares at x. And that's going to change depending on what x is. So now, to figure out the volume of this whole solid, the volume is the integral from a to b. We're doing it from 0 to 1, so it's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of a of x dx. So we think the area of the x is the square prism, it's the base of the prism, and dx is the tiny thinness of that little slice that we are going to be adding up. And dx meaning it's going to 0. So subbing in what we know, this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus x squared squared. It's going to be a lot simpler if I actually expand those brackets out. So that's going to be x squared minus 2x cubed plus x to the fourth dx. And so now we can take our integral and we get x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 2 plus x to the fifth over 5, which we're evaluating from 0, from 1 to 0, which gives us 1 third minus 1 half plus 1 fifth. And then that's going to be minus just 0, because everything has an x in it, which equals 1 over 30. And that is the volume if we have these perpendicular to the x-axis. So what happens if we wanted to draw the same, do a same solid, but instead of doing cross sections that were perpendicular to the x-axis, we wanted to add up cross sections that were perpendicular to the y-axis. Would it have the same volume? How would that be different? So let's sketch that picture out. We'll do example two. Find the volume of a solid as above, but with cross sections that are squares perpendicular to the y axis. So we have the same functions. We have this, we have this. We have one, we have one. So what we are going to be doing is we're going to be cutting cross sections here, 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 here. And then we're going to be drawing squares coming out of the page, but perpendicular to the y-axis. And so our, our 
um, shape is going to look just a little bit different. Okay, so we still have our cross, our squares coming out of the page, but this time they're perpendicular to the y-axis. So what we have to think about now is that we want to sum, we want to add sum over y. So we want to have our area be in terms of y. So we need an a of y and we want this little distance, that distance between those little those prisms that are like right right next to each other. We want that to be dy and not dx. So what we need to do is we need to write everything as a function. We need to write this length right there that's going to be the base of our square as a function of y and not a function of x. So we need if we look here, our first function, if we write this in terms of y, we add y equals x squared. So as we are looking at x's between 0 and 1, this, is, this means that y, x is going to be equal to radical y. And it's the positive radical based on the situation that we're looking at, because our x's are positive, our y's are positive. Okay. Um, so x equals radical y, and that is our function of y. And y equals x, luckily, is the same as x equals y. So what we are going to do to find our area, our area is going to be the difference between these two functions. So it's going to be, um, and it's going to be that, that distance, because we're finding the area of a square, it's going to be that distance squared. Right, that's going to be the the distance is going to be the base of our square, and the height is going to be the same. So this is equal to we're going to take we're going down. So the y-axis is sort of where we're centering ourselves. It's going to be we know that radical y is actually going to be bigger than y for these for anything that is a fraction, so to speak. So we are going to take radical y minus y, and we are going to square it. Okay, and that's our a of y. So now we're going to be integrating. Notice the bounds. We're going to our bounds here are going to be in terms of y. So we're actually integrating from zero to one still, but this is from y equals zero to y equals one. And so this is going to be the integral from y equals zero to y equals one. I'm going to expand the brackets here again. We get y minus two y to the three halves. plus y squared. This is going to be dy. So we're going to integrate this. We get y squared over 2 minus 2. We're going to divide. We get y to the 5 halves, and we're going to multiply by 2 fifths. So that is 4 fifths um, plus y cubed over 3. And now we're going to evaluate this from 1, 0 to 1. So we get here 1 half minus 4 fifths plus 1 third. So 1 half plus 1 third, we're going to need a denominator of 30. So that is 15 thirtieths plus 10 thirtieths is 25 thirtieths. 4 fifths, if we multiply by 6, is 24 thirtieths. So we actually get, and this is going to be, sorry, minus 0, because you plug in zeros, you get zeros. So this actually works out yet again to 1 thirtieth. So the shape may look a little bit of bit different, but the volume when we add it up that way is going to be the same. Okay, two more examples. So we are going to find, the first one is another sort of contrived problem. Um, we are going to find the volume of a solid with a base with here let's let's phrase it with equilateral triangle cross 
sections perpendicular to the x-axis that is bounded by the function y equals x, the x-axis, and x equals 4. Okay, so let's again sketch. I, I think that with these, it is pretty crucial that you sketch the situation, just like with the area problems, because you need to know sort of what you're getting yourself in for. So we have, we are bounded by the x-axis, y equals radical x, and x equals 4. And this is 4, comma 2. Okay, and so what we have this time is we still have these little lines that are going to be bases, but instead of our cross sections being squares like they were last time, we're going to have cross sections that are equilateral triangles. And those are coming straight out of the page. So it's going to be kind of an interesting pointy but kind of rounded solid that's going to come out of that. So we need to find, in order to do this, we need to find the area Inter of each of these triangles in terms of x. So let's start by trying to find the area of an equilateral triangle. So we have an area of an equilateral triangle. We have it's 1 half times base times height. An equilateral triangle is composed of two um, 30, 60, 90 right triangles. So if this is our side, this is half of the side, and this is root 3 over 2 times our side. So it's 1, 1, 1 root 3, 2. Okay, so if we want to find the area, the area of our triangle is going to be the whole side, this is also half of a side, side times root 3 over 2 divided by 2. So the area of an equilateral triangle is equal to root 3 over 4 times the side squared. So it's side times root 3 over 2 side times half. Okay, and that's something you can pretty easily work out. So in this case, the length of one of our sides, okay, so area of our equilateral triangle is root 3 over 4 times side squared. The length of one of our sides is radical x minus 0, which is just radical x. So that's our y value. It's the y right here, y value of our function. So the area in terms of x is radical 3 over 4 times radical x squared, which is radical 3 over 4x. Now to find our area, we just need to, to find our volume, we just need to integrate from 0 to 4, because we're interested in the region from 0 to 4, our area, which is root 3 over 4 times x dx. This gives us root 3 over 2x squared, and we're going to evaluate that from 4 to 0, which gives us root 3 times 16 divided by 2. So 4 times 4 is 16. So this gives us 8 root 3 minus 0, which gives us 8 root 3 for our volume. The last problem is kind of fun and interesting because it's actually somewhat useful. And you might have wondered, so most of the volume formulas that you get when you're in middle school, um, there's some kind of reason. So you can think about building up cubes. If it's a cylinder, it's like the area of the base times the height. You can try to think of why that particular volume formula came to be. Sorry, this is example four. Um, but the volume of a sphere, they pretty much just tell you, oh, it's 4 thirds pi r cubed, and then they leave it at that. We can use this idea of integrating to sum up cross sections to prove that the volume of a sphere of radius r is v equals pi four-thirds pi 
r cubed. So this is one that they just kind of throw at you. Volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, not going to tell you why, just is. Okay. So let's see if we can use this idea of finding the volume of a solid with known cross sections to solve this. Okay. So we are going to think of having of a sphere. And so a sphere, and we're going to center our sphere at the origin. So let this be r, and our sphere is radius r, and this is negative r. What we are going to do is we are going to try to use integration. We can take a sphere and we can slice it into circular cross sections. So we're going to think about slicing the sphere into infinitely many circular cross sections. I'm not going to draw too many because it's just going to be a little hard to look at there. And what we need to do is the volume of our sphere is going to be the integral from negative r to r, the area of this circle in terms of x, dx. Okay, so we're going to be integrating from negative r to r the area of the circles, our circular cross sections of x dx. So I want to know, this is my y value, and I want to know what, so my, I, I know that my area, we're going to do a little side problem here and figure out what our area is. I know that my area, the area of my circle, which is what I need to find, is going to be pi times y squared. But I want to get, I want area in terms of x. So if I look here, I have x and I have r, because this point has to be right on the surface of my cylinder. So for any given x value, we know that y, well, we have a formula, which is that r squared equals x squared plus y squared because of the Pythagorean theorem. This makes a 90 degree angle. So if we're trying to find our y, which is the radius of our, it's not r is the radius of the sphere, y is going to be the radius of my circular cross section. This is going to give me, if I rearrange this equation, I get y equals r squared minus x squared, the square root of that. Okay, so y equals radical r squared minus x squared. Okay, so my area of my circle in terms of x is pi times r squared minus x squared radical squared. So it's just pi times r squared minus x squared. And I don't need to worry about taking a radical and then squaring it or whether it's positive or negative because in my sphere, x is always going to be smaller than r because when it gets to r, we're done. We want to integrate only between negative r and r. So that is my area formula. Okay, so now I can plug it back into my volume. So my volume is negative r, the integral from negative r to r of pi times r squared minus x squared dx. And I am going to go ahead and integrate that. And this is pi, and we are treating r as a constant here. So this is equal to pi r squared x minus pi x cubed over 3. We're going to be evaluating this from negative r to r. And I can just factor the pi out of all of this. So this is pi times r squared times r minus r cubed over 3. That's my first part. And I'm going to plug in negative r, which is r squared times negative r minus negative r cubed over 3. This is equal to pi times, we have 2r cubed over 3. We have r cubed minus r cubed over 3 minus, here is a negative 2r cubed over 3. And a positive times a negative, which gives me pi times 4r cubed over 3, and just rearranging the order, which gives me 4 thirds pi r cubed. And there is your volume formula for a sphere. And I think I have to go back just because I, I had this sinking feeling that when we were doing this right here, I forgot 
when we're doing back here, back here, back here. Nope, I didn't forget my dy. Always have to have your dx and dy. So I, I just had a feeling I forgot a dy, but I actually didn't. So that's awesome. And we found the volume of a sphere. What could be better?